Hello! Hello, it's been a long time since we've done this. It has. Welcome to our estate summary for South Australia. For those who are new, we do a estate summary at the end of every state. We talk about exactly what we've spent, what was a waste of money, what was worth the money, what we enjoyed the most, what we enjoyed the least, etc, etc. So kind of just summarise everything. But uh, more importantly, <laughs> we should probably mention that we live in the back of our van. <laughs> and if we're travelling around Australia if someone's doing the here, lap. I feel like you know we live in that van, right? But if you're new here, we're travelling around Australia. We're travelling around Australia in the back of our van. <laughs> <laughs> Firstly, I'll touch on what dates we were in South Australia. Yeah. So we arrived in South Australia on the 4th of February 2023. And then we stayed until the 11th of June 2023, which is 128 days or 4.2 months in South Australia. Yeah, which is probably a lot longer than most people that do the lap. Yeah. But that's because we want to, like, do the states justice and, like, Yeah, so we have talked them. about this before, but if you're new here, we're taking the lap really slowly, really trying to explore each state and see yeah. as much as we can, and with no time frame. Yeah, let's get crack a lap. Now, over. let's talk money. Yeah, the most important or interesting topic that I'm sure majority of people are interested in. <laughs> Our total spend for the 4.2 months is... $8,768.17. Now, <laughs> it's a lot more than we had in our last state summary, which yeah. was three months and it was like $3,000. we will yeah. put on screen whatever it was. Yeah. But we have had some really big purchases this month, which we'll explain later. This month. This state. <laughs> this state. Also, we should add, Vian has lovingly given me the comfy seat and he is on the little yeah so i'm chair much in the middle. lower down but yeah. uh that's why vian looks so tiny right now i am not shorter than oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay cool expenses broken down by category so the first category we've got is van related costs mm. And that was $2,682.59. So we've broken this down and fuel is $1,897.91. Yes. Now we did drive <laughs> quite a we bit. We did drive quite a bit. I'll put a, a distance that we've driven. I forgot to check it. I just realized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we have driven quite a bit and we mm. even drove back on ourselves, yeah. um, which we explained in our day without the van video. Yeah, it wasn't planned. We kind of went into the city way and then back out to Coopedi and then back on ourselves. So yeah. a lot more driving this month, uh, this state. <laughs> <laughs> I keep saying month. Then we have van and contents insurance, which was $670.48. Mm. And we explained this before, but this is $167.62 a month. Yeah. That includes our whole van, obviously. The fit out. And, and also everything. our contents within it. So we've got yeah. everything insured within. Then we have other van related costs, which is $114.20. Now, what is that? Because you didn't other, <laughs> explain okay, what it is. So that is Ad one blue? AdBlue and windshield washer fluid but also um, sealant for oh, the yeah. skylight and the exhaust fan um, because the sealant that I use, a lot of people use it in, in Australia. It's like the most predominantly used one, um, but it does deteriorate over a couple of months. So it's good yes. to keep putting a new coat on. I will eventually put the stuff that is like more long-term on there, but it's just so difficult to get in Australia. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Now, out of van related costs, we have groceries, which was $3,082.43. That's the only category that we went over our expected spend on. Yeah. But, you know, I didn't feel like it's that bad. And it's also like, it's been an inflation and whatever. So, yeah. Cool. Connectivity, which is our phone plans. And mm. that includes, like, we use the internet off our phones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was $436. Initially, we were both on Woolworths Mobile, like, prepaid. Um, but I'm still on it. Lydia's still on it because yes. we just use my phone for hotspot and whatever. Um, but when we got past Port... Port Lincoln. Lincoln. Yep. 
Yeah. We started running out. Exactly. <laughs> so because we got close, we thought, let's just go on a bigger plan. Hmm. It's not that huge of a difference yeah. in price. Yeah. And it just adds a lot more freedom. And like we mentioned in the last date summary, we kind of expected to spend a little, little bit more. Like we budgeted yeah. for more in the connectivity. Um, yes. And we were just unsure of what we wanted to go with, or be it like a little broadband mobile broadband thing or yeah. Starlink or whatever. Yeah. Um, we just went with a bigger phone plan. Yeah. And yeah, it's with Telstra, we get 300 gigabytes. I think it's 89 bucks. I think it's going to go to 94 in July, but yeah, that's still not too bad. Yeah. And we have, we've had a signal pretty much everywhere and exactly. we haven't had any issues. We still haven't found a need for Starlink yet. And it's mm. something we've mentioned previously, but we really debated Starlink yeah. and we're thinking, should we get it? Shouldn't we? We um denied, but it was just so expensive that we yeah. thought, let's see how we go with our phones and we'll go from there. And you're right. I don't think we had any issues with signal. Yeah. Maybe a couple times driving to spots. Actually, no, I was going to say mountain ranges, but not really. Yeah. <laughs> um, we pretty much had signal the whole of South Australia. So. Yeah. It's, yeah. No issues Just driving there. places, really, like, <laughs> and by driving places, we mean, like, driving to Wikipedia. It would drop yeah. out, like, every now and then. It would drop out while you're <laughs> driving, but then come back in when you're mm. at a town. So. Like, literally, like, Lake Hart, which is in the middle of yes. nowhere, we had signal. It was slow, yeah. but we had signal. Yeah. So which... we've had no issues yet, and they're still really happy with that. <laughs> Next is paid campsites. Mm. And... We spent $261.59. Yeah. And that is for seven nights at a paid campsite. Yeah. We'll break nice. that down into exactly <laughs> which um, campsites. Hmm. And it may come as a surprise to anyone who's been following us a bit longer because in hmm. our last state summary, we said paid campsites was the biggest waste of money. <laughs> but there are kind of some reasons for these. And as we talk through on that kind of makes sense so the one spot we spent two nights was hind marsh caravan park <laughs> and that was because of the mouse situation yeah it was totally not <laughs> ideal and no. it was probably better for us to go somewhere where we could actually unpack the van yeah clean it out but also not have to worry about it like and uh, other things because like yeah. we mentioned before van life it's all about decision making yeah. so while you're under pressure, it's probably better to remove a lot of decision making and just go yeah. with like, okay, cool. Yeah. And Let's just spend the $25 a night. $30 a night. $30 a night. <laughs> but yeah, when we, when we saw the mouse, it, there were no free campsites nearby apart no. from the spot where we got the mouse. Yeah. That is and well. we were going, we were booked in the city a couple of days later. So we thought, you know what? It's better to just pay yeah. for a campsite and not even think about it yeah. do not regret spending that i no. think we needed it the next one which was straight after hind marsh was the adelaide caravan park mm. just outside the cbd and that was for three nights and it was 139 dollars and 66 cents we decided to book a caravan park in the city because it made more sense with going and actually exploring the city yeah. rivers underground camping yeah, that I wasn't was... sure whether to include this in paid campsites or like uh, accommodation because it's it wasn't really a, a paid campsite, True, but it was. We didn't have the van in there. Yeah, that makes sense. But it was thirty six dollars and ninety three cents, which is kind of pricey for uh, a tent, tent spot. site <laughs> with no water, no power, <laughs> nothing. And no nothing. But for us, but that was very really unique. about the experience and being underground. And I'm sure we'll touch on that later. The last one is Maitland Show society caravan park and we stayed there one night this was when we were catching up on videos and we were just hanging out for a bit on the york peninsula mm. and the weather had been really bad i think it was raining and cloudy for yeah. weeks and, and we hadn't driven not only that anything. we'll get into a load later but we were running low on our battery so. yes <laughs> so we were like you know what let's just book one night at a caravan park it wasn't that was bad 25 bucks. 25 bucks that's so. pretty decent Pretty good. Next is accommodation, which was the underground hotel in Cooper PD. Yeah. And that was $170 for the night. And next up, we had subscriptions, which was $57.16. What do we include in subscriptions? It's, That's it's like literally Lightroom. just Lightroom. Just Lightroom. It's just oh, yeah, Lightroom. of course, because we paid Epi Epidemic for the year. Yeah. And then the last time Don't we said subscriptions on my website, which is like a yearly, two yeah. yearly. So just Our Lightroom. website. Sorry, I said my. <laughs> your baby <laughs> now entertainment was a hundred and one dollars mm. this included eating out 
Yeah. We actually caught in up with the a friend. Adelaide video. Yeah, so also included in the friend. city for the Adelaide city video, like Bian mm-hmm. said. And then we also caught up with a friend and had dinner with her in the city. It also includes donations to Josephine's yeah. art gallery and Kangaroo yeah. Orphanage. Which is 20 bucks if anyone was interested. They are doing great work over there and looking after kangaroos. So. Yeah. That was a good spin. It also includes uh, Crocodile Harry and... Which is a questionable experience. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, then we have transportation. Now, this is one of the big outlier Mm. spends, which isn't technically related to South Australia, but did bring our spend up quite a bit higher. Yeah. It was $661.44. Yeah. And And, uh, you might be wondering, what is this transportation? It's... The ferry to Tasmania. Yeah. So we just booked a one-way <laughs> ferry. Yeah. It includes one, like, a room stay. So yeah. we're obviously going to do a video on we that. We did book a room. Um, mm. I was a little worried about how it would be going over, <laughs> whether yeah. it would be rough. So I thought, <laughs> let's just book a room, at mm. least for the way there. Yeah. And it brings our van over as well. Yeah. So we can spend as long and as us, we want in Tasmania. And us, of course. And us. <laughs> they just take the man, not us. <laughs> <Book Yeah. room. laughs> so that's the ferry to Taz, and like Bian said, that's just one way. We haven't booked return for that. Hmm. We're going to see how we feel when we're there. How long we want to stay, because I feel like that's one thing that we've heard a lot, is people go there, they yes. book their return, and then they regret staying too short. We'll see how long we spend. I've also heard people regret <laughs> not booking return because they get stuck, but since we don't really have a time frame, we're totally happy to just... If we get stuck, stuck there a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> so then we have gear. Hmm. Now, this is another thing that was a big An outlier. outlier high that really pulled our expenses up and hmm. wouldn't really relate to travel in South Australia. But well, our gear... Some of it, at least. Yeah, true. Well, part <laughs> of our gear was our camping supplies, which hmm. was pretty cheap. I think it was... <laughs> $81, something like that. I think so. It was mm. pretty cheap. And then we bought external drives. Yes. So I'll show them a little later. But we were just running out of storage. And I also had a normal, regular external hard drive. And I think it was because of the corrugated roads. I don't know what. Um, it just started acting up. So yeah. we got to SSDs now, external SSDs. So mm. they're more durable, smaller. And a lot of space. We th- we had a moment where we thought we'd lost a bunch of footage. Probably and... about two months worth of footage, and that yes. was very stressful. Very stressful, <laughs> so. Yeah. We bought those. Cool. Very pricey, but uh, worth it. Now, the final category, which was other. $333.15. Hmm. Now, this was $121 on laundry. So, hmm. laundromats, washing, drying. Then it was $110.05 on clothes. That included some winter gear. We got uh, jackets, trackies. And uh, and I bought... If you watched our... uh, Sterling Range. Sterling Range series. uh, In the second mountain that we did in the... Magog. Four Mountain Two Day Challenge. Lydia had a little accident with her leggings. A casualty. My leggings. Not your favorite leggings. I don't have any others. We're going to have to order some more. I love these. So, That's very sad. And we bought more leggings for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Then we had composting cubes, which is $68.64. Which we still have a lot of composting cubes. Yeah, it's we not still the have amount that we needed for <laughs> South Australia. <laughs> We're not pooping that much. For anyone who doesn't know, it's just for our toilet. You have to yeah. put like composting cubes in there. And then the final one was health and medical, which is $33.46, which is just scripts for me. Yeah, for like a year. Yes. Yeah. That's it. Okay, monthly average. What so the monthly it? average is two thousand and eighty-three and fifty-eight cents, which comes to a daily total of sixty-eight and fifty cents, which a day. A day, which is not that not bad. bad. It's not too bad. Not too bad. Um, like we mentioned before, that eight thousand dollars does include um the ferry to Tasmania as well as the gear costs, which wouldn't be related to travel in South Australia. Yeah. So if you remove that, monthly average would be $1,712.09, which comes to $56.29 a day. But even including the ferry, as well as the external drives, before we set out on on the lap, we sat down and we came up with like a target of what we think we would spend in every single category. And we're still 
four hundred dollars a month underneath. Because yes, we guessed what two thousand five hundred about that. About that, and like we mentioned before, the only category that we really spent over on, if you ignore the gear cost and the ferry to Tasmania, was groceries. Which yeah. you know, with inflation, whatever, is kind of expected. <laughs> and also, we don't eat Ooh. out pretty much ever. Yeah, so um, that brings our entertainment cost down. Yeah, it brings entertainment down, adds it up, and I'm celiac, so we cook a lot of things from scratch and spend a bit more anyway. And we still have quite a bit of a stockpile in the van. Yes, we're kind so, of working through it. <laughs> one thing that I think is notable is the diesel cost was quite expensive towards the end of our WA mm -hmm. trip and the start of our South Australia trip. Probably when we got back to Adelaide-ish, our third time around, second yeah. time, <laughs> third, uh, the fuel prices came back down to normal to what it was over a year ago. Now we're going to talk about things that were a waste of money. <gasps> this is Should like, I go first? Yeah. <laughs> and the funny bit is... <laughs> we wrote this independently. So kind of like we did with the first video, each of us sat down privately and kind of ran through these questions and wrote some dot points. And I know you're going to have included this. Yeah. I know. And this is going to sound so ridiculous because <laughs> it was such a small purchase. <laughs> but we brought bubble tea in the city. And that was one of the way biggest wastes of money. <laughs> <laughs> because I think we've been like hyping up bubble tea for no like we. what me okay me <laughs> I've been craving it and I was like we should get boba like we should get bubble tea we should get bubble tea nah, nah, nah. Yep. and when we're in the city I was like oh we should get it because <laughs> you know we're just chilling about in the city we're eating in the city let's just have bubble tea and we had it and I think the first the sip, first we were both sip like, I was like oh oh no and like it's very rare to us or well, to me at least and you I yep. guess where you buy something and then you instantly regret it because we research the crap yeah. out of everything. Yeah. So it was such a strange like feeling. Yeah. And like when we started we... writing us, I was like, my first point that I wrote was bubble tea. Yeah. <laughs> Which is so stupid. It was like it's we such took a, a small small like, purchase. Oh. It was so just disappointing. Yeah. I think I'd we I'd overhyped it in my head. And then for us, obviously we're traveling full time. We want to be as frugal as possible. And we cook and make a lot of nice, yummy things ourselves. Yeah. So especially when we eat out, we're like, it's usually a big thing. We're yeah. catching up with someone and meeting someone. It's special food that we can't make ourselves. Or we can make ourselves, but it's way too much effort. Exactly. And we're like, <laughs> okay, bubble tea is going to be so good. And then it was just. Yeah, I feel like it's maybe because we're so used to like the good coffee that we make and the oh, Nesquik. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a waste of money. Yeah, that would have been a lot of Nesquik. <laughs> yeah, could have just bought a Nesquik. <laughs> then I also wrote down the the underground accommodation in Cooper PD. Mm. Now it was 170 bucks, which is a lot to spend. It was. And I think we really felt like we had to spend a night underground because it's part of Cooper PD. It's a part of the experience. Like you're going exactly. all the way out there and it's quite a little bit It's what drive. they do. And it's what it's how the people live around there. It's what Cooper PD is known for. Yeah. So we felt like we really had to. And then we kind of added on the Rivers Underground camping at the end hmm. so we booked that and it was very expensive the underground night in the hotel it was 170 dollars hmm. and that was a very standard room with a uh, bathroom and bed yeah. pretty much there wasn't really an experience to it it was just a room that was underground and hmm. i felt the rivers underground camping was actually more felt authentic. more authentic yeah and we got more of a true underground experience from it do you know what i mean yeah i also feel like the crocodile harry's kind of gives you the inside of what it's like inside of a house exactly an underground house i think the hotel was set up very hotel like and even the yeah. wall when we touch the wall and it was completely coated and then we go in rivers and we touch it and it's just like all <laughs> dust on yeah. our hands i think that gave us the authentic underground experience without having to spend as much money yeah so for me 170 bucks for one night wasn't worth it when there was an additional experience to it. Yeah. I'm guessing I, you put the I same. agree. It was also my second yeah. point. It's not like, you know, we we don't want to spend money on accommodation. We really do enjoy going to yeah. unique places and staying at unique accommodations, even if it's just a regular, well, not regular, but like, let's say a tiny house or whatever. 
um, and it's just got like normal amenities yeah. that a house has. It's just like it didn't really have anything anything else that we didn't experience in Cooper PD because of the underground camping and yeah. as well as um, Crocodile Harry's dugout. I feel like if we didn't do the underground camping and didn't go to Crocodile Harry's, it would have been more of a highlight. Yeah. And also, we really like the van and mm. like sleeping in the van. So <laughs> it almost feels like a waste to be like, we love the van and sleeping in the van. It wasn't a getaway for us. We don't feel like we need to yeah. get away from the van. Yeah. Although exactly. now that we're in winter, I have been saying, oh, it'd be nice if we stayed somewhere with a spa or a bath. That's I have true. Been, I've been pushing on it a little, but uh, <laughs> anyway, I only had one other thing, um, and that was a park pass. Yeah. P yeah. Did you have the same? Yeah. Purely because we brought it, um, I think we brought it in Norseman, mm. so we prepared to have it immediately upon entering South Australia, and majority of the national parks that we went to were actually free, and a lot of South Australia isn't covered by national parks, where... Yeah. In WA, I felt opposite. any experience we went to was within a national park. Yeah. And then we came to South Australia expecting it to be the same thing, naively didn't really look into it, and just thought, oh, we need a park pass. Mm. So I think we bought it immediately and then didn't use it until a lot later, when yeah. really we could have just brought it if we knew we were going to need it for specific parks. <laughs> I, I think the week that we, the only time that we used it was the week that it expired as well. Yeah, <laughs> coincidentally. Literally. It was the, I really don't know how to pronounce it, so I'm so sorry I'm going to butcher this. <laughs> the only only park we needed it for was the Dilba Guranda in his national park. It would have made more sense for us to just buy a day pass yeah. for that day. Yeah, 100%. So it's more just us looking into it. And I think going forward, we will look at states better and say, do we need a park pass? Which par parks are we going to go to? When do we need it? Kind of thing. So I said one extra night in Adelaide. We were initially going to book two nights. Um, but in the caravan park in the city. Yeah, <laughs> but we, we were going to see a friend. So we stayed an extra night, but also we couldn't get a booking for the space center for um, on the same day that we were exploring yeah. the this city. Yeah. So I feel like if we planned it more in advance, we would have just spent one day in the city and then also yeah. just obviously the second day have seen the friend. But I think also with that, when we were looking at booking it, it was let's say $45 a night. I can't remember exactly how much. Hmm. And we were watching it for like a week and we were like, oh, we'll book it eventually. We'll book it eventually. And then when we actually went to book it, it was suddenly like 35 a week, yeah. uh, a night, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> a week would have been good. Um, so it actually drops. So we're like, oh, we might as well add the extra day. Then we don't have to worry about moving quickly and yeah. et cetera. Cool. Anything else? That was it. Worth Before you do money. that, yes. the sun just keeps blaring into your eyes and oh, off your phone sorry. and off that so i'm just gonna lower this a little bit all right so things that were worth the money and something i didn't have listed but i kind of just touched on was rivers underground camping in cooper pd because mm. like i said before that gave us the authentic cooper pd underground experience yeah now the only other thing i wrote actually was the campsite in the city now i know you just said having an extra day wasn't worth it mm. but actually being at a caravan park in the city let us be more stress-free in we can leave our van at the caravan park and just walk into the city and do yeah. everything on foot rather than okay we're gonna have to drive through the city to each spot wonder if we can get parking leave our van on the side of the road where Exactly. Yeah. So it was more secure. Exactly. I think it was easier, a good spend. Didn't have to money. think about moving constantly. Exactly. It's not really related to South Australia, but I said things that were worth the money is the ferry to Tasmania. I feel like <laughs> we're I feel so like a pumped lot, for it. <laughs> a lot of our expenses are not really travel related, but more so living related. So it's kind of difficult to say, oh, this was worth the money when you know. A lot of the experiences were free or whatever. So yeah. not saying that South Australia was crap. I'm just <laughs> saying that uh, a lot of the things were free. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what I have is the ferry to Tasmania. We booked it pretty well in advance. Yeah. So it the was... The prices weren't too bad. Yeah, exactly. Now, we did have this category a little bit later, but we thought let's run through it now because some of it is money related. The section we sought through was things we wanted to do but didn't. Mm. I'll run through mine and let me know yeah, if you have anything couple. different. So I guess the first one to link it to money was the shark cage dive. Yeah. 
And before we set out on the lap, I was like, I really want to do a um, cage dive with great white sharks. Especially because, like, South Australia is, like, one of the most iconic places in the world. Exactly. I think. To do it. To do it, yeah. And we really thought we would do it, and we mm. were very set on doing it. Yeah. It's something you really want to experience. I feel like you see sharks, and you just have to be in front of them to I really mean, appreciate even, them. Even, was it Streaky? <laughs> Shrieky Bay. Yeah. They had like a, a petrol station. Oh yeah. And then they, like at the back of the petrol station, they had a life-size replica of the biggest what great white. I think shark it's the biggest shark caught, caught on a uh, line. It's gonna be quiet because this is at the back of like a petrol station, but they have like this replica of a shark that was caught, and it was like a world record catch on like a rock, like ages ago in this area, Shrieky Bay. And I always thought sharks were big, but I never knew how big. Yeah, when they say they're like four meters long, you don't really realize, even in this camera, you can't really tell. It's huge. Before I was like, eh, maybe we can go shark cage diving. But uh, this is very intimidating. Like, ooh. And that thing was Massive. huge. And that's like the <laughs> like upper end of the scale of how big they can get. Yeah. So it wasn't like as big as they can get. And I feel like in that moment we were like, oh <sighs> my gosh. And you don't appreciate the size and power of sharks, yeah. I think, just from seeing them online. And that was something we really wanted to experience in person with a cage dive. And I feel like it really stuck with us for a couple of days. Because like yeah. one night, like I think it was like five or six days later, up at an night and we're like, how big is a crocodile? How big is this? <laughs> we how big started is this? looking and at everything. Started, Crocodiles get as big as the bloody van. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> it's insane. Like, I feel like cameras, footage, whatever, never really do yeah. things justice. I think you have like, to Animals be there are and actually so and great it. and like, big and like whatever it's mind-blowing <laughs> <laughs> so that was something we really wanted to do but it is so expensive yeah and there's two companies that do it yes. one is like one's, the most like one's <laughs> like very thorough they do a three-day mm. um expedition to really make sure you will see sharks and that's just crazy expensive yeah. it's over a gram per person and then there's another company that do it and it was about one it was a one day thing and it was at least 500 each yeah. i'll add on and the screen how much it was and it's not guaranteed you're gonna see sharks mm -hmm. it is a they're wild animals with like, any <laughs> any animal experience real. is really luck as yep. to whether you're gonna see them yeah. what kind of interaction you're gonna have and for us to kind of rely on luck and hoping we'd see something and then spending pretty much what our monthly expenses are yeah it's not that it's expensive <laughs> and not worth the money it's just that it was hard for us to justify yes. when we're doing this long term yeah like it's it's kind of difficult sometimes when you're like oh <laughs> we really want to do this it's expensive but that's like a we can't afford expenses. it but it's just hard to justify doing it yes so maybe that's one of the things that at some point in the future yeah, we like, come back and come do. Back. But like Fionn said, it's hard to justify it when you're doing this full time. So maybe <laughs> we'll come back to it. Yeah. Now I have two other things. So one I'll touch on very quickly because we've talked about it before, but was not doing more of the Floria Peninsula. Floria Peninsula. Floria Peninsula. I hope I got that right. <laughs> um, and that was first time we were there and going to explore it. We had the mouse situation. So we didn't end up exploring it because yeah. the whole mouse dilemma. But also the weather wasn't great then. It mm. was really cold. So we debated dropping by and we're like, oh, it's cold. We'll come back. And then when we came back and passed by, we came out of the city from our stealth camping and we're going to head immediately there. And it started bucketing down awful weather for yeah, not ideal. a very long time. Yeah. So, not great. Uh, the only other thing I had was the giant cuttlefish yep. in Wala. Yeah. And oh, this as well. as well is something that leading into our lap, I was like, oh, we're going to swim around with giant mating cuttlefish. It was something... Which, if you don't know, it is Yes, Wala so is iconic. the what, cuttlefish capital of the world. Yeah. It's where all of the giant cuttlefish come to mate. Because of the rock rocky yes the rocky terrain yeah and 
they all just come so close and you can snorkel around and Point Lally, I think it is. Point Lally, Wayala kind of, but yeah. it kind of stretches I think from Fitzgerald Bay yeah. um, all the way down. Mm. So we really wanted to do that and I kept talking about it. And I kept saying, like, my mom should come meet us there and come swim with the mating To put it into perspective, I, we bought an underground water housing for, yes. like, our camera so that we could do that. Pretty much. But it just didn't line up with time. Yeah. And the more research we did, we're like, okay, well, we'll need wetsuits. And... Yeah. The main reason really was timing. Yeah. Because we come in South Australia and... We there's only so long you can hang around an area, and South <laughs> Australia is big, so a lot of things are really far apart. You'd be driving hours to get to different areas, mm. and for us to stay around that area for that long, yeah, it just wasn't feasible. Really, we would have just been sat around waiting for ages, yeah, because we before we didn't experience were, that area exactly, and we were like, oh, maybe we'll go out to Cooper PD, come back. And then do the swim with the giant cuttlefish. But it was and still a month when out. we came back from Coobapedia, it was still a month yeah. plus out from being peak cuttlefish season. Yeah. And we were thinking we can't wait here another yeah. month just for this experience. Maybe we'll come back in the future. Yeah, like with the sharks. So I had another point. Yes. Um, a lot of people recommended Kangaroo Island. Oh, yes. And it looks absolutely beautiful there. But... The cost to get the van over yeah. is pretty much that of, like, Tasmanian Ferry. Pretty much the amount so, of Tasmanian Ferry. And it's, like, a 30-minute ferry. 30 to 45 yes. minute ferry. So it was, once again, hard to justify, especially because it's not like it's a unique experience for Kangaroo Island. I feel like it's a very condensed sample I feel like of, there's going to be a lot of negative <laughs> backlash. There's going to be a lot that. of negative backlash. But, like, when we looked at it, it's, it's a lot of, like, it's amazing. Beautiful. Beautiful. I just feel like it's a lot of condensed experiences that we will actually experience throughout Australia. So, like, the exactly. sand dunes, the beautiful beaches. Yes. The wildlife. wineries, the wildlife, et cetera, et cetera. And kayaking as well through, like, rivers. So, I feel like it's... We're going to experience a lot of exactly. those things in any case. Justifying the spend of the ferry was... Yeah. I think and also, I don't think they us. had any free camps available as well. Yes, they didn't so have free camps. So you would have to take the ferry that, over and then pay for a nightly amount. Yeah. Because there were no free camps. will add up quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, so we couldn't justify it. But like Vian said, apparently it's beautiful, beautiful there. And we're not um, and we're bagging sure, on it at all. We're it's sure just, it would be a memorable experience. Yeah. Especially if it's like your one holiday or two holidays a year. But yeah. if you're doing it long term, I feel like. It was, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Best campsite. I have two. Bunda Cliffs on the Nullarbor. That was... <laughs> Incredible. Absolutely that amazing. That was a perfect start to South Australia. If we did it again, I'd yeah. probably spend more time on there, honestly. They were stunning. Yeah. They were just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I would also go back in whale watching season. Hmm. And I think that would be a really Ooh, amazing place yeah, to see whales. Yeah, that would be absolutely amazing. Because firstly, the site's incredible on its own. You've got hmm. that vantage point of seeing the whales and it would just... It's amazing. Yeah. And my second one is Hancock's Lookout in the Flin Flinders Range area. Hmm. I mentioned this in a previous video, but it was beautiful. It was remote. You were looking out on the entire range. We had yeah. emus passing us, kangaroos. You can, you can see... It was just beautiful. I'm not sure where they what it's called but i'm gonna say it's a gulf but you can see the gulf like the coastal water whatever but also at night you can see all the lights from port augusta, port augusta yeah. so it's quite beautiful it, it was just during stunning. day dawn Huge nighttime it's beautiful <laughs> my highlights were abundant cliffs and hancock yep. lookout mm -hmm. um i wrote location wise so what that means is like proximity to places yeah. being very convenient um, the Kuba PD old timers mine, I think it's called. Yes, that was that was good. Free stay. I don't think they had a time limit there. It's just the old timers mine had like a little patch of yeah. land right next to it. It had like movie props and whatever there as well. It was it was, it was very very it was cool. Good, but it and was, it was so right, close, pretty to the much town. in the middle of the town. The day we explored Kuba PD, we were parked there and just walked around. Yeah. Then I have Munta RV and Maitland. Yeah. Um. So once again. York Peninsula, beautiful. And these two campsites were 
I would say they're pretty well presented. Yep. Very yep. nice. The Maitland one, <laughs> I would say it's amazing. But the first time we drove past it, there were people yeah. were burn offs of, of the uh, garden green waste burn offs. Yep. Um, and then the, when we actually stayed there, um, we had lots of birds poop on the van during the night we, and we woke up and we're like what is that is that hail it sounded like hail and it was just birds pooping <sighs> it was on the just van. birds pooping on the van but thoroughly enjoyed it there it was beautiful um then i wrote tapina like yep. that is such a good location yep. for exploring mount gambia and the surrounding area yep it's um, like 15 20 minutes out from mount gambia yeah Perfect. then i wrote notable mentions <laughs> mentioning every time we say that. The 24-7 petrol station or fuel yes. station in between York Peninsula yep. and like Adelaide. Port Liberty. Yeah. We did the video with making the breakfast burgers yes. and whatever they're saying at a gas that station. Um, that was pretty unique. So, Kunalapin. It's like... Uh, <laughs> oh, it's, it was I on think the it's way. Kunalapin Soldiers Memorial or on something. On the way to Gambia. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which... We didn't even know it was there. No. We just had a quick look on Wiki Camps. The weather was miserable, and we're like, "Oh, we we're gonna plan on going somewhere else." But it was closer, so we're like, "Okay, cool." Just past Murray Bridge, mm. we pulled in, and there's like paid sites and a uh, free site. And I just wanted to mention it because it's quite cool the they way they had it set it up. It was cool. Um, so it's literally every paid campsite had a tap. Um, a card tap s system. Pay pass. Pay pass. Yeah. And your time would just expire, I think, at 11 a.m. the yeah. following day. Um, so if you want to use something, you like can water just and electricity, tap your card. You just tap your card and, and it like, automatically goes. So it's a metered system. You don't need to book anything yeah. or anything. First come, first It was really so cool. So it was very cool. The way it was the set concept. up. They also had, it was free cold showers. If you want hot water, just... Yeah, five bucks the way they me. set it up like that is it's really good. Smart, of everything's everything's available to everyone. If you want some facilities, just pay pass done. Yeah, um, that was really cool setup. Actually, a lot more places should have that. Yeah, I'm sure it'd be a lot cheaper in the long run for uh, people to do it that way. Yep. And then I would say Point Sturt because it was very beautiful there. The roads <laughs> in wasn't that horrible, but the obviously mouse. we got the mouse there. But yes. Notable mention if you have a ton of peppermint oil and you don't <laughs> mind getting a little pet. Go to Pointster. Go to Pointster. <laughs> cool. Uh, best experience? Mount Gambia. <laughs> I just we both really love. I think there. it's obvious from the video that we really love Mount Gambia. It was beautiful. There so was beautiful. so much to see, so much to do, and obviously the possum experience was just so special. So yeah. we did. Mount we did actually see a possum. In the Adelaide CBD. Yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't our first time seeing a possum. We were driving back at night from catching up with our friend Deanna, and yeah. there was a possum. At just... the caravan park, just like behind our Ica's um, little site. And it like jumped on the fence and, and ran, ran off, off, and we were like, was that a possum? And we're like, what? What is it doing here? But, you know, it was, yep. it was so unique. So, Mount Gambia was just whatever. incredible. I also had Morialta Conservation Park. Mm. That was the hikes with the waterfalls, seeing the koalas. I feel like it. if you're a local, it's probably such a normal, casual spot for you. Mm. But that park being free and just so beautiful was just yeah. incredible. Yeah. Uh, really the enjoyed Adelaide that. Hills are just... It's, it's so beautiful. Yeah, that was a... Amazing. And then I also just had the York Peninsula. Mm. I feel like we had a really good time on the York Peninsula, yeah. even outside of that video, because like I said, we chilled there a bit for <laughs> a couple a of days. But our York Peninsula video, we got to see all the salt lakes, which are actually pink. Yeah, actually <laughs> and pink. coloured and amazing. That was really cool. The beaches were really nice. The mm. water was really nice. It was just... Can't yeah. complain. I had all those. I... I did write at outer Adelaide regions. Yep. We're not really city dwellers, so <laughs> that's why I said outer Adela Adelaide regions. So I really enjoyed the shipwreck, the dolphin yes. sanctuary. We yep. didn't see any dolphins, by the way. We didn't mention that in the video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but the shipwrecks, it was very... It was, it was really it cool. It was nice to get back onto the kayak. Yeah, I'd I say. think we need to be on the kayak a bit more. Maybe not 
we're being so cold and Maybe wet not. at the moment. Yeah. But we love being out in the country. And then the Adelaide the Hills, the Morialta Conservation yeah. Park, that was. Yeah. Yeah. That's something while in the wild. Uh, I feel like animal experiences are always just so extra special to us and they will always make our top list. Yeah, that's it. Cool. Least favorite place. <laughs> I'm... I feel like this is going to be so unpopular. Once again. <laughs> okay. Okay. Least favorite place. I'm 99.9% .9 sure we've written the same spot. And it's going to be a very unpopular opinion. And I mm. guess we'll expand on that. <laughs> um, the Aya Peninsula. Mm. So <laughs> it's very popular. We'd heard um, really great things about it. But there's a couple of reasons. And I'll run through them. And mm. I'm guessing you wrote the same thing. Uh, yes, and then and one you can more. add on if I missed anything. <laughs> um, firstly, rough corrugated roads. So, yeah. getting around everywhere. If you don't like your cars, <laughs> visit the Eye Peninsula. I mean, the first <laughs> spot we stayed was Point Brown, and I think it was a twenty-kilometer corrugated. I think that was road. probably the that was worst awful. road that we've worst or second worst road that we've ever done. It, it was. I'm sure, so like bad. I'm sure, Northern WA and like the Outback up yeah. WA will be horrible as well but yeah. it was just such a shock coming from wa and the then southwest and then yeah the southwest and then like the coming, first roads yeah. that you drive on you're like it felt oh. so <laughs> outback and so remote and then the first campsite we stay at is 20 kilometer corrugated. really bad corrugated road to even the reviews on wiki camps were like oh if you want to be at the car wreckers like come on this one it's not great yeah and that was just Horrible. So the roads are really rough. Also, roads are rough to main attractions. So it was pretty yeah. much unsealed road everywhere. Which also, I want to say, probably very unpopular. Um, but we were going to film the Eye Peninsula yes. and include like the Talia Caves. Yeah. And you see the Talia Caves plastered pretty well. A lot of places. A lot of places. It's been promoted. I feel like. We drove a long way to get there as well. Horrible road as well. Yeah. And there is rock pools there, um, which might make it worth more going there. But when we were there, it was high tide, so we couldn't yeah. even see the rock pools. It was one of those experiences where you pull up and you're like, is oh, this, this it? this is it? Is this it? And I yeah. feel like people really make it seem <laughs> like it's a lot better than what it is. Yeah. And it's I'm literally so all... sorry if this offends people. This is just our own opinion. In but our we, <laughs> we want we want to be honest about yeah, it and say it wasn't worth the drive. For pretty us. much the whole of that Aya Peninsula, respectfully, mm. we went to a lot of attractions and, like Vian said, we had tried to film a video and we went to all these spots and it just didn't feel genuine and authentic to us. Yeah. Um, and we didn't love the spots and we want to be honest about that. So rough roads, everything was also really far apart. Mm. It was at least hours of driving between every town or attraction, and it was just a lot <laughs> on that is unsealed the roads. Di distance and also because of the horrible roads. Yes, we were also there during a heat wave, <laughs> so I think that definitely added on onto it and making yeah. us like. Because there's like not that much greenery around as well. It's mainly yes. like limestone. And it was very. It was just hot. hot. So that was a part of it. Also being overwhelmed with the planning. Mm. We had just come off the Nullarbor and we hadn't really planned for South Australia and we're thinking, what do we do? Where do we want to go? And then I feel like everywhere we went to the Aya Peninsula, we were kind of disappointed by it, and I think it was a bad layup to how we thought South Australia was going to be. 100%. If that makes sense. Also, because we'd just come off the Nullarbor, the whole left-hand side of the coast was very limited on water mm. and was charging for water. So it was harder to just find easy access to water. And we ended up buying sense. it from Sedona. It wasn't that expensive. Nah. But the whole rest of the left-hand side, you were paying quite a bit for water. Mm. And I wanted to comment that if you love fishing, if you love seafood, this is the place to be. The Aya Peninsula is known as the seafood frontier. And if yeah. that is what you love, you are going to absolutely love the Aya Peninsula. Yeah. Great for fishing. Has I think it's oyster capital of the world yeah. is Sedona because they have oyster fests. There's also that one town that had like um, all those cages on the, the lake. No, no. Oh, Coffin Bay. Coffin Bay. That's sure. the one. It, it's it's amazing if you love it's seafood literally just and fishing. Seafood everywhere. You will love it. But for us, we just didn't. We don't it. really love 
fishing or seafood or yeah so apologies mm. if that's an unpopular opinion but it's just not what we like i'm sure it's a great experience for a lot of people yes <laughs> so i wrote i peninsula as well yeah <laughs> but then i'll throw it mercedes-benz <laughs> <laughs> Always be our least favorite place. Yeah, it's like uh, if you say something will happen in this amount yeah. of time, like don't say it. Yeah. <laughs> What's that thing you should always Under, undersell and, and then, then over deliver? Yeah, over deliver. Yeah. Exactly. Where I feel like every experience we've, we've had with Mercedes is like, really oh yeah, disappoints us. Here is the expectation, and then it's just like, oh no, it's going to cost double as much or yeah. take double as long. If or you want to not be fixed, see more on that. Check out our video on yeah. why we didn't trust Mercedes, so. and et cetera. Et cetera. <laughs> Mercedes will never be a fun place for us. Regrets uh, or things we change. Uh, my only point was just less time on the Aya Peninsula. <laughs> because I think we hung around a long time thinking we should have done more when really it's okay not to yeah. enjoy Certain that things. kind of place. And then we, as soon as we got off the Aya Peninsula, I felt like we enjoyed so many spots. Oh, hundred percent. So like, kind of hanging around and trying to enjoy it. We sh shouldn't have. Shouldn't have. No. I, I wrote cool. the same thing. We've then got biggest surprises. I just wrote two things, kind of what we touched on before. But firstly, mm. a lot of the national parks are free. Yeah. Such as the Marialta Conservation Park. That was free. Mm -hmm. And I was also surprised by how pretty much... Actually, yeah, everything we did in Adelaide City was free. Yeah. Apart from eating. <laughs> <laughs> but all of those experiences were free. And we just could not believe that. The museum... The Space Discovery Center, MOD, all Botanical of these places, gardens. Botanical Gardens, <laughs> Art Gallery, all of it was free. And we just couldn't believe that and thought that was pretty amazing of Adelaide to make that free. Yeah. No. Anything else? I'll start it off with a, with a banger. Oh dear. Getting a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> that was definitely the biggest yeah. surprise. We totally... If how do they get in? <laughs> How do they get in? <laughs> they find the teeniest weeny little gaps. We just, I think we totally didn't expect no. it. And then when it happened, we were so thrilled. Because like, you hear about people getting mice, but you also hear about people leaving their skylight open yes. in the night, leaving their doors open in yeah. the night. And I'm, I think we why? were naive in thinking, oh, we keep everything shut and yeah. we're usually pretty smart about not getting bugs or things in. We'll be fine. Yeah. And then when we had a mouse, it Never was Never become too shock. complacent. Nope. Um, and then I wrote, how big South Australia... I'm really low right now. <laughs> <laughs> the heights have changed. Talking about bit. size. Um, how big South Australia is. Yes. I feel like you look at a map, you're like, oh, yeah. You don't mm. actually really pay attention. Yeah. Like, you're like, oh, yeah, there's South Australia. It's huge. Yeah. It's so oh, big. Oh, yeah. It was, it's hours driving between places. Yeah. I mean, even the sheer size of it, we didn't even, like, <laughs> like go to, like, the deserty part. Further uh, outback. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. obviously, we don't have four-wheel drive and whatnot. Yeah, but it's massive. It's huge. <laughs> it's a lot to drive between places. I mean, even in Vic, mm. we've noticed such a huge difference in, oh, it's just an hour to get there. Oh, it's just an hour to get here. Everything is so much closer. And sorry, South Australia, but it's already a lot nicer having everything so much closer together. Such a squirrel moment, but there's a cookie bar right next to us. <gasps> oh. Aww. Cookie Every time I was just about to say cookie on cookie TikTok, there's like a trending sound that's like capybara. Capybara. Capy Every time we see a cookie bar, cookie bar, cookie bar, <laughs> cookie bar, we're like cookie bar, cookie bar, cookie bar. Yep. Anyway, <laughs> uh, oh, I wrote dear. how many free activities there are in Adelaide. Yep. Mount Gambier. Like honestly, how amazing it was. Yeah. It was breathtaking. Like it's. So beautiful there. Stunning. It was amazing. Stunning. Um, like we said previously, after spending a lot of time on the Eye Peninsula, like catching up on editing videos, planning yeah. South Australia, and then coming closer to Adelaide and like the York Peninsula, all that. Like yeah. it's such a huge shock, I want to say. Yeah. It's almost like a like a culture shock, you know, when people <laughs> say they like go international and like, whoa, culture shock. <laughs> But it was a culture shock because we like yeah. we were so used to like this arid terrain, yeah. not having anything close to Remote, us, middle of nowhere. And then all of a sudden, it's like 
whoa. <laughs> yeah. Civilization.、Um, and greenery. And greenery. And then, probably very boring. But how many solar and wind farms there are in South、yeah. Australia? Yeah. It's,、sure. I feel like the wind farm in Albany, like everyone in WA is like, oh yeah, there's a wind farm down in Albany. No, no, no. And I feel like it's such a tourist attraction. Yeah. And like, you know, I, I did a little bit of a, studied engineering a little bit. And、um, knowing how small that wind farm was in, at, in Albany,、yeah. I, I felt like, oh yeah, it's kind of small. And like Lydia's like, wow, look how amazing it is. And Lydia's mom、yeah. was like, whoa, look how big they are. And I knew they were little. But then coming into South Australia, it's like,、yes. whoa, they're really big and like solar farms and wind farms. There's loads. I think they're also planning on doing like a hydrogen plant at some point. It's、mm. actually, I feel like it's <laughs> such a mixed opinion, but it's actually amazing how, like, how much green energy, selfish, like, how much they're investing in green energy. And I feel like it's mainly because. You know, they have the big mine up near Cooper PD that uses、yeah. a lot of. They obviously want to offset their carbon emissions. So it's really、yeah. beautiful to see a state be conscious of the environment and wanting to do better, even though it's being more expensive. But it's beautiful to see. Next one Biggest challenges. So, first thing, obviously, mouse situation.、Mm. Totally didn't expect to get a mouse in a van and then having to deal with it on a whim and. Disrupt our plans and、Especially、figure when you're, like, out what we can do. Especially when you're like low on water and can't find a spot to get water as well. Is, yeah. yeah. I, I think we dealt with it well. Yeah.、Um, the funny bit is, and you probably wouldn't expect this, Vian didn't want to film. Vian's traumatized, but we gotta go get fuel and then drive there. Well, neither、uh, of us planned on filming. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you probably didn't want to film either. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> neither of us wanted to film, but I looked at Vian and said, We really should film and document this because、yeah. surely other people are going through this. And he looked at me and he's like, <sighs> and I was like, I know, but I think we probably should. I feel should. like <laughs> if we saw other van lifers like, that we watch,、yeah. I feel like if they address it, you would have that expectation、yeah. and prep for it better、yeah. as well. So it was important for us to be do, honest, be and, honest and, and share that. And I think that's what we always try to do is be as honest as possible about what van life is actually like and what、yeah. you can expect if you are interested in van life.、Hmm. So for us, we kind of sat there and we're like, neither of us want to film. We both feel like crap. I feel like we actually enjoyed it though. <laughs> I think we have to film. It made us kind of laugh about it and、hmm. I think chill a bit.、Yeah. But I do think we dealt with it well in the sense that when it was happening, Vian pulled out the front and looked for everything, and I was quickly searching through the van life group of what to deter and what we can use and stuff like that.、Yeah. So, by the time Vian had cleared everything, he said, All right, I've cleared everything. And I said, Okay, cool. We need peppermint oil. We need traps.、Uh, mm. This bunning has this trap in stock, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, I think we handled it very well. And years ago, I feel like we kind of would have just crumbled. Yeah. We really held our own on that.、Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing I wrote was bug issues. Yep. In South Australia, it's kind of a weird thing to note, but we noticed firstly, I think in Peterborough,、yeah. when we're heading out to <laughs> Tarawi, was we would always have a s c a l a open when we were in the van and we'd always just have the fly screen there. And we stayed on like a, it, was, it was like a sporting oval or something. Yeah, it was a sporting oval. And we had the s c a l a open and we we're going about our day. And the whole van had filled with. They were、the、like、skylight. flying ants. <laughs> Not the van. No, but they were they getting were, through. They were getting through the skylight slowly. They, yeah, so was, the、oh. whole skylight was covered, and then they were getting through the actual fly screen, and there were、mm. some on the bed. I think it was flying ants. Yeah, I think、of. it was flying ants. But these bugs were just. Everywhere,、yeah. and then once we got them out, it took ages because I felt like they were somehow still in there. And then, like a、yeah. week later, there'd be some like falling out, it's just horrible. But we even had issues in later on in other towns as well. Like, we'd、mm. have the s c a l a open, and then we'd get bugs, and we'd be like, Okay, we can't have it open here, and we'd shut it. Um, I still got two more. So, travel planning,、uh, as soon as we entered the、mm. state, I think we mentioned this in the impressions of Van Life as well. But、yeah. we entered the state, and I mainly do the planning because Vian does the editing of the videos and everything. And then we kind of we talk, we obviously talk about the plan together, it's not just me. Yeah. But I'll kind of get the general outline and then we'll run through it. And entering the state, I felt so lost because when we entered, I didn't know much about South Australia and what to、unknowns. expect. There were so many unknowns, and、mm. we just came here. 
and we're just completely thrown off with what to do. I also feel like we, with WA, we visited multiple places yeah. multiple times. So it's got that familiarity. Yeah. Familiarity. <laughs> um, so it's kind of True. like you know what to expect. I feel like you can research a place and know a lot about yeah. it, but still not have that expectation of it. And like i got to say, I really think that helped us with our start to van life. Yeah. Because imagine if when we first so set out on van life and we're getting used to travel, we went somewhere completely different. It was nice to go with somewhere we were familiar with while we got used to yeah. living in a van and worrying about energy and use, and uh, emptying our toilet and yeah. water top-ups and things like that. While you got used to actual van life things, it was nice to be familiar. Yeah. And I feel when we came to South Australia was the first, oh crap, we know absolutely nothing about this state. Yeah. What do we do? I've personally already gotten better at this. When mm. we entered Vic, it was just, I just pulled up all the regions and said, all right, we got two months till the ferry. Let's kind of jot out a plan. And we've now got pretty much the next two months planned. Yeah. And that was done within a week, yeah. pretty much. While before in South days. Australia, yeah. it was very overwhelming. Yeah. I have one more. Laundromats are very hit and miss. And yeah. I think we just kind of naively went into it thinking, oh yeah, all laundromats should kind of be the same. Yeah. <laughs> we would be like, yeah. okay, there's a laundromat here. Let's go to it and use it. As long as it's tidy, it's clean exactly. and tidy, it's fine. As long as it's clean, it's fine. And I felt like we we definitely wasted some money doing that. An example is the Hindmarsh Caravan Park. $8 Sorry, because there. we loved them. <laughs> yeah. We loved them every other way besides that. It was They're great to get machine, away from great. the house. But went and used the washing machine. The washing machine was great, like Vian said. And then we put it in the dryer. And they and... had a gas-powered dryer. This yeah. first time I'm using a gas-powered dryer. And it I think it's $4 a cycle. And a cycle is over an hour. Yeah, it was and over an hour and it didn't even dry it. Yeah, the first cycle, it was pretty much the exact same it was going in. And the we second were like, okay, cycle, we'll do a it was pretty cycle. much the same it went in. And the so, clothes were just wet, so yeah. we ended up having to go to a different laundromat yeah. and do that. So that's the challenge is some laundromats being hit and miss. I feel like it's kind of obvious, but because we hadn't used them, we didn't really think about it. Yeah. But now, um, when we know we're going to need a laundromat soon, I do a lot of research, have a look at the reviews, take a look at the photos. What do their machines look like? Are mm. they new? Uh, will they be good? And do they have good reviews? Yeah. We've been to some bougie laundromats yes. in uh, <laughs> South Australia. It was in an Irish town. Dublin. Dublin. Yeah. Yeah. N not sure if it's Irish. But that one was so... Yeah. So cool. Yeah. <laughs> if a laundromat could be cool. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> so this one's probably a boring one to a lot of people. But coming into the winter months, we really had to look at our usage of electricity, especially in periods where we, we were stationary for more than five days. Yep, yeah, which did happen quite a bit because we were catching up on a backlog of videos, yeah. but now we're all real time, so it's a lot easier. Actually, from being in the southwest of Australia, we were averaging about 2.5 to 3.2 kilowatt hours a day from solar yield, so just our solar panels on the roof, to 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 kilowatt hours a day. So you can imagine that is quite a quite a difference huge difference um but that's not only because it's like south australia and wa it's because we were going into winter yeah um i'm not sure what it what it's called i think it's called equinox and solstice but no idea <laughs> i have no idea it's like the orientation of the sun to to earth um so the southern hemisphere would be further away the Earth would be tilted further away from the sun. So it's not just the rain and the clouds covering and whatever. Our, we have a really good solar charger, MPPT, so it does, is more efficient with farming solar than a normal solar charger would be. Mm. But it's also because the sun is further away, so it's less intense. Yeah. Um, so, for example, like when we went to Kopapiti, same months, same climate. I wouldn't say the climate in... It's it, pretty much the it's, same. It's pretty much yeah. the exact same as it was in Adelaide. I would, yeah. You would expect it would be hotter, drier, yeah. whatever. No, it was exactly the same. Yeah. But our solar yield was actually Higher. decent <laughs> in Kopapiti because we were further north in Australia. So yeah. that's definitely something that... Like if you're considering doing van life and you're reliant on solar and you don't have yeah. DC to DC charges, that's something 
definitely to consider. To consider. Yeah. But that was that was it. And it only really was a struggle when we weren't moving. Yeah. But like in the York Peninsula when we went to Maitland yeah. to yeah. charge back up. And to catch up on videos and everything. But now we're moving significantly quicker already. Yeah. yeah. And we're not really having an issue. Yeah. I mean, we have two DC to DC chargers that yeah. are... That they are. Keep up. Amazing. <laughs> so as long as you just keep on the move or yeah. don't stick around for... Like a week plus, then you're good. <laughs> Final category, favorite products. Yeah, it's such a weird category or topic to talk about. It's not sponsored at all, but... Um, you'll be able to tell from mine that they're <laughs> so, I, We just wanted to kind of touch on anything that's been really useful to yeah, us like for highlight. that state. Yeah. So I'll go through mine first. So first thing for me is <laughs> peppermint oil. Kind of obvious. <laughs> <laughs> I feel since the mouse situation, it's given us a lot of peace of mind. Mm. And especially when we rock up spots, we're like, okay, this is quite yeah. out there. We might have mice here. Let's just top up. And it's a nice way to feel more confident in staying space yeah. in spaces. It also smells really nice. So nice. Mint oil. Like when you leave the van and you come back in the van, you're like, whoa, yeah. it smells so nice in here. <laughs> you don't notice it when you're in here for ages, but like you said, when we hop back in, it's like, oh, that smells oh, so nice. It smells so good. <laughs> so the peppermint oil is great. We definitely have to find a way to buy it in bulk yeah. because we're going I for had a quite quick a few look, of these. But it seems like it's pretty much the same price. Yeah. But that's, like I said, only a quick look. They're kind of pricey and we've brought a lot since the mouse situation but i think it's worth it yeah 100 cool and the other thing is that we mentioned earlier we caught up with our friend diana mm -hmm. diana is an amazing artist she has her own youtube channel and we'll link it in our description mm. we've been friends with diana for Couple years years, yeah. years now and she lives in adelaide and adelaide, adelaide. <laughs> she said it very like <laughs> sorry <laughs> She lives in Adelaide, and this is actually the first time we got to meet her in person, which was super special. Yeah. But she actually made us a painting. Hang on. Let me pull it out. And it was from a photo at... Photo. Video. Photo. Well, this... I think this was a photo. Yeah. But it was from the Misery, Misery Beach. Beach in yeah, Albany. Albany. And she actually painted this. Yeah, which is very beautiful Plus, and special. Which is super beautiful. We haven't put it up. I'm really struggling with where to actually put it. Yeah. And I'm really scared of it getting damaged. Especially over corrugated roads. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm like, I don't want it to get wrecked. So we're keeping it wrapped up at the moment and we just kind of yeah. wiggle it around the van and wherever we are. But I just want to shout out that because I think it's just really special and beautiful. Yeah. And there's a mine. Let me beautiful. put this down, but like out the sun because I don't want it to... <laughs> You my bag. Okay, so my favorite products. Yes. Um, not really travel related or anything either. Um, but external hard drives or SSDs, they've been really good. A lot of storage, a lot of capacity, quick, speedy. Yes. I can edit and dump everything on so here. So as much as they were no a time. big purchase for the state, they yeah. have been. We got a really good deal on them. Um, but, um, and then the DC to DC charger, I don't think yeah. we would have been able to yeah. be off grid for 121 days <laughs> plus yeah, hundred and yeah, 23 did, days yeah. or whatever. Um, if we didn't have the DC to DC yeah. chargers, um, they were great. which initially when I was doing the van build, I thought, oh, well, I could go with one, but the alternator is quite a sizable alternator in the van. Mm. So I was able to get two of the Victron um, DC to DC chargers, I think 30 amps, but they obviously do more than that. That's just whatever the rated capacity that Victron gave them. I wish that Victron had a bigger DC to DC charger, so you only need one. Um, I know that Enerdrive do a 40 amp one with like a sol solar charger included, but I wanted something that was a little bit more hardy. Because once the van's built, I didn't want to do any maintenance or have to worry about something not working in the future. Mm -hmm. So I really went with quality, quality components. Um, so we do have two of, of them. So we get, it fluctuates pretty heavily depending on how hot the charges get and how hot of a day it is and how much power the alternator is giving to it because we have a smart alternator. But majority of the time it, we get about 
700 watts to about a thousand watts input from the alternator to our van battery. We've also made a fun game out of it. Yeah, oh yes, a big fun game. <laughs> Every time we drive now, we place bets on what the battery percentage is gonna be at when we finish driving. <laughs> Yeah, it's so and we'll fun. be like, okay, what do you bet it's gonna be? And I'll be like, oh, 76. And Vian's like, oh, I'm going for 91. And I'm like, oh, you're going oh. high. And then it ends up being that. And then we get pumped. <laughs> it's really funny. We it's, just we yeah. just place bets when we drive on what it's gonna be. Yeah, which is very. So, yeah, very impressed with the DC to DC yes. chargers, SSDs, peppermint oil, and painting. I mean, that's it. That's our that's categories. It. That's our time in South Australia. I think we had a blast. Yeah. I definitely think past the Cooper PD, yeah. York Peninsula, that Port Augusta area, yeah. like the Hancock's onwards, Lookout, we onwards was just, is so beautiful and so enjoyable. Yeah. Um, we had such a great time. And Paul Dapper. Right? And maybe we'll <laughs> come back for cuttlefish and sharkation. Sh sharks. One day. Maybe Kangaroo Island if, if we uh, yeah, true. <laughs> get a lot of hate on this video if we're not going to Kangaroo Island. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Oops. Uh, but I, I mean, I guess that's it. One thing I want to add as well, which we've been talking about, is I know our video uploads have been a little random on the days. Uh, yes. We do want feedback from you guys on when you think we should upload. Mm. We're debating between Thursday evening, Saturday evening, or Sunday morning. Mm. We were initially posting, well, we've been posting a couple times a week. The yeah. goal for us going forward is one video a week and then also occasional um, extra videos. Like this one. <laughs> like this one. <laughs> just adding some extra ones in. Not mm. always just for state summaries, yeah. but if we get up to a lot that week, we'll post two videos. So yeah. that's kind of the goal, but we did want feedback from you guys on when you would like us to upload. We thought with Sunday mornings, that's when a lot of the big creators we watch upload. Yeah. So for us, we thought, well, there's loads of people uploading on that day. Should we upload on a different day or should we just upload then? And do you guys just binge them all, <laughs> all day? <laughs> I think we can do polls on like the community section of our YouTube. So we can put a Who poll knows? up and it will be... <laughs> Thursday, Saturday, or Sunday, and let us know your thoughts. And I mean, thanks for watching and being really so supportive on our videos. It's definitely fun to read through the comments and see things that you know stood out to people and yeah. see people or enjoying if, the um, travels. Fion makes an error in the, his fact checking. <laughs> Fion accidentally oh. said the. Blue, the blue, blue whale, whale is the, the second, second biggest, biggest whale in the and world, the and it's it's the biggest. I read an article, and it said second to the blue whale, and like something in my head just went, <laughs> oh, second <laughs> biggest. Yeah. So <laughs> mistakes him. were made, and I still lay in bed at night thinking about that. I said the blue whale was <laughs> the second biggest whale we're in the both world. Such perfection. <laughs> when we film we make more mess ups even yeah. we've been watching our videos recently and I keep saying like yeah and I'm, <laughs> I was about to say and I'm like <laughs> and I'm like why do I say like so much I actually don't know why and I didn't mm. know I used that in conversation a lot it's such a filler yeah. empty word but I feel especially as we're filming more around other people yeah. maybe we're making more missteps because we're like oh there's people there missteps missteps miss whatever mistakes, just mistakes. <laughs> <sighs> we're making more mistakes because i think we're like oh there's people in. i guess it'll yeah. just we'll get come better with time. Time. we'll get better yeah. but uh yeah we've been loving posting videos and having fun with it and yeah loving traveling still bye guys bye